Today, we're going to be talking about gifts of the Spirit in relation to love. Amen. Um, the ingredient of love. I want to pray right from the beginning before we get ready to get started here. Um, of course, as we know, a lot of people outside of what we're doing in the har- for the harvest party, an alternative, something to gather a community together in a safe space. Um, there are people who are worshiping devils and things like that. And there's a lot of spiritual activity that's taken place. And it's such a blessing that we have come to worship Jesus. So we just want to thank God for what he's doing and just to protect people that are out there on the streets and the other things that's going on in the world. Amen. Let's pray and ask God to have his way tonight and just to protect people. A lot of things happen on the night of Halloween. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity just to worship you and to know you. And and Lord God, to go after you, Lord, to seek you with our whole hearts, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, tonight that through this Bible study, Lord, that eyes will be open, Lord, that we would just draw closer to you, Lord God, and we would just know your word, Lord, and we would be strengthened, strengthen each person today, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace being sufficient and, Lord God, throughout, Lord God, uh, um, this, this country and what you're doing, that you would just protect people on this night, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We thank you for every outreach, Lord God, and for every person in the community tonight that may have an opportunity to rub shoulders with the church and say that, you know what, these are good people and that they would be attracted to the body of Christ and that your love would be revealed, Lord God, through us, Lord God, that somebody will say, wow, I want to try a Sunday and see what these people are all about in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we pray that your anointing Lord God would break every yoke today Lord God let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee O Lord moved by your spirit Lord God bless us today Lord we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray amen amen hallelujah go and praise him amen As you know, um, throughout this month, uh, we've been talking about the gifts, and it's so important um, that we understand the gifts that God has for the church, the spiritual gifts that God has for the church, and we want to be able to um, allow God to use us and activate us um, in the gifts for his glory. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the Bible study here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting verse 1 through 3. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I'm using like the English standard. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith, So as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3, if I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Verse 8, love never ends. As for prophecy, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. So, Verse 13, now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, we understand faith is important. The scripture says without faith is impossible to please God. How many of you guys, you're like, you know, that's important. It's like, I got to have faith, right? And we understand that. And, and, and by faith, you know, if you look at, look at Hebrews and talk about, by faith, this happened. By faith, that happened. We need faith. We know that hope maketh us, maketh us not ashamed when we have hope, the hope of the gospel, the hope of, uh, of making it and all of that. But the word says out of all of these things, the most important thing, even above faith and above hope, is love. And, and we're going to be focusing on how that component of love, there's something about love. We didn't go through the whole chapter, but really I want to read that whole chapter. But I know because of time and how we do things when we're speaking. But in verse 11, Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child. 
I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. There's a lot of people who may have faith and may have hope, but it doesn't necessarily mature them. But there's something about love that it matures us. It changes us as we love God and as we love people. Amen? So first, before I get going, going, I want to start off with some questions and just kind of get us talking here. Number one, why is love such a big deal when it comes to operating in the gifts of the spirit i'm going to use this mic and if somebody hallelujah why is love such a big deal um i believe Love is such a big deal is because that's the way God drew us mm-hmm. in love. And that's the way we're going to draw other people is by love. Yes, in Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, I've loved you with an everlasting love, and therefore by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. Amen. What else? What else? Why is love such a big deal? And even in the regular life, you know, you people are like, I need love. Dude, I mean, people want love. <laughs> Why is love such a big deal? They can try to fake it and be like, what's love got to do with it? No, love's got everything to do with it. <laughs> right over here. I know somebody said it shows you care. Mm-hmm. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of sin. Yes, yeah, sometimes in life you can look at us and, 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 and we see that we're, we're, what is man? That we're born and shaped in iniquity. From our mother's womb we come out like where we have this sinful nature. and We make mistakes and we're not perfect and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there's something about love that says, you know what? God says, but I so love the world. That love that casts out fear and it, and it makes you feel bold again. Again and wow, love can just wow make things right. Amen. I mean, who ever had somebody who just made you mad and like you didn't want to be their friend anymore? You don't want to talk. You had nothing to do with them, but it was something about love that got you to forgive and got you to change your mind and your attitude. Love will do things like that. Yes, one more, one more. Anybody else? Anybody else? The big deal about love. You can go to the next person after me, but I, I think love is um, such a big deal because it's the greatest expression of God uh, because he is love. And when we love, we, we express the greatest character um, of who God is. Awesome, Pastor. You always get my message, Pastor. I got that in my notes. God is more serious about love. We got First John chapter 4, verse 7. God, amen. That's what I'm talking about. Right over here. Amen. Man, the nature I want you to think I'm copying pastor because my answer was the same. <laughs> it is the main character and attribute of God is love. That's his yes. main attribute. Yes, that's the main attribute of God. Awesome. Number two, according to the context of this scripture that we read, um, how important is speaking in tongues, prophesying, and understanding deep mysteries and spiritual knowledge if we do not love people? How important is that? If you don't have love for people, how important is it, you know, you're speaking in tongues and prophesying if you're doing it without love? Probably more self-explanatory, but anybody would like to? Somebody say, you know what, I really love you, you know, but. (laughs) I I got a word for you. If you really think about love, love is the beginning. Anything else is the end. Okay, okay. Love is in the, in the beginning, from the beginning. Amen. You're getting in my notes too. <laughs> Amen. Somebody else. Oh, I would say that if without love you will abuse those gifts that God gives you. You will use it for vengeance and to get even and to be spiteful instead of it being as God wants us to just love everybody and to use them, you know, with love as a basis. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Um, number three, how would it make you feel if you were able to operate in the spiritual gifts without loving people or loving God? You know, as somebody be like, oh, he sure is anointed, you know, but you don't really love people 
and don't really love God, how would it make you feel if you were still ever to operate without loving people? I think it will make you feel very prideful, mm-hmm. very boastful, um, a know-it-all. A know-it-all. Without, without really knowing it all. You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, how many of you guys, you've heard about stuff in the news or different things? You're like, man, but that person was anointed. How did he do that? And how did she? And you're, whoa, something was missing in the equation. It was most likely love. Because when you love people, you can't abuse those type of things. And you understand the responsibility and the weight of those gifts. Amen. Number four, we all know that you need faith to operate in the spiritual gifts and that you need um, or we need hope um, in God to believe for the supernatural to take place. But why does it seem like the requirement of love, although at times it may appear to be more tangible component, is oftentimes the most difficult part to fulfill in our humanity? Us as humans, it's, it's hard to really fulfill that love part. You know, sometimes it seems like that's the most difficult part. Um, with the, uh, to my understanding, with spiritual gifts, one can become, you know, um, used to just getting from it, you know, glory, accolades, praise. But when you've got love, it's, you, you're in the toilets washing in the sink. You're taking out trash. You know, you're hungry after church, but you stay late. You know, so that's what I see. In the spiritual gifts, you, you know, if you're not careful, you, it becomes me, me, me. Yeah, but when the more gifts you got, the more we need to be picking up stuff off the floor and doing the little things, picking people up. You know, I remember one time her wife was asking me to do something, and God was saying, you know, if you want to do something great, you need to help her. And I was thinking about doing something for the church. It was like, I'm about to go. And I was like, nah, I can't do that. I got to. Remember the little things. Uh-huh. That's right. That's right. Someone else? Awesome. Uh, considering the whole context of the, of the book of Corinthians, mm-hmm. from the beginning, they were fighting. The church was fighting, backbiting. They were living outside of the will of God. Yet, because they had the gifts and they believed in the gifts, but they had believed in the gifts apart from God. They, like the Lord says, you, you know, you, you healed in my name, you did this, you did that, but I never knew you. Mm-hmm. You're getting my message too. That's good. See, a lot of times God blesses us and gives us, and he don't take it away, but yet we have to love one another. That's how the world knows that we love God. We Amen. Love each other. Amen. Amen. Good job. Give everybody a hand. Thank you. The interaction. That's a good introduction for what we're about to be talking about in this topic. So some insights on love and spiritual gifts. Number one, operating. And thank you, brother. If we can switch. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Amen. Operating with the gifts of the spirit, with love at the forefront keeps human pride, fill in, human pride from taking the credit for the work that God is doing. We don't want no man to glory, right, in the flesh. As Paul talks about, put no confidence in the flesh. We want that glory to go to God. But when you do things outside of love, pride can get in the way. I believe there is a special path, fill in, and process if you, need, if you need one of these handouts, just raise your hand if somebody doesn't have one. I believe there is a special path and a process. So there's a path that God take, takes you through with love. There's a process that God takes you through, and, and you have to have that love. That God's love takes people through that helps define and validate the purpose of their spiritual gifts to make sure that it's not for self-glorification. Rather, that our gifts be used to edify, to strengthen, to encourage the body of Christ and bring glory to God. That's the whole goal. So we operate in the gifts. Man, we want God to use us. But the whole goal is that it, it helps people in the church. 
And, and love has to be at the forefront if you really want to help people and encourage people. Um, as we look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, as, you, as, you, as, as, mentioned, as someone mentioned earlier, as we go there, um, if it was just about being used and just about doing some miracles and things, <laughs> it, this wouldn't, Jesus wouldn't have said this part. Chapter 7, verse 22, um, Jesus speaking, I'll start at verse 21. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In thy name have we not cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which buildeth his house upon a rock. So it's like, yes, let God use you. There are spiritual gifts that's going to help people, and people are going to look up to you for that. But as they look up to you, say, you know what, this is for God's glory. And, and, and then, because at the end of the day, it's not going to be like you're getting some check marks or some stars and look at you. He's like, just be happy that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the goal. Even when Jesus sent them out in twos and they came back and they said demons were subject to us and we did this and all of that type of, he said, you know what, don't rejoice because of that, but just that you're going to make it. It's just good because you love people. And that's what it's really all about. And um, amen. Amen. Also in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 through 45, we see the same thing where um, they're at the end. And uh, he, he says, you know what, those on, my, those on my left, this is the Lord speaking, saying, these, those that are on my left. He says, you know what? He says, those, those that are on, let's just read it. Because I was going to do a whole little brief thing, but let's read it. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say, talking about the Lord, um, also unto them that are on his left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. This is at the end, right? Those who have come. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visit me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, in so much as ye have done it unto the least of these, ye have done it unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into um, life eternal. That's those who are on the right. So the Bible talks about how the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharpening a two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. You can't trick God. So if you're not loving people, God's going to know. It doesn't matter how anointed, how good you preach, how much you talk, how Christian you look. At the end of the day, the word is going to be able to reveal who's really loving people. And that's something to get the credit for. Say, so you know what? Just love people. Just obey God and just love people. That's the quality that God really wants to produce, and that's what we want to be, where it says um, um, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing, a study to show yourself approved unto God. When we learn how to love people, we're not ashamed at the end because we've studied, and the Lord says, you know what, it's all about loving people. So when we stand before him, we're not going to be ashamed because rightly dividing a word of truth is not just speaking it and sounding articulate, but how did you bring it all together and live this and implement it? So at the end of the day, the people you remember why you're here today, was it because of what? Love. It wasn't because they were super deep and super intellectual and they just got you going and, oh, you're so smart, I just want to go to church. After they got done talking good, you were watching them. You were like, okay, do they really love people? Amen? Amen. All right. Number two, love is the key element for God's standard. Oh, right before we move on to that. The main reason why I mentioned those two scriptures, it sounds all, you know, talking about judgment and everything, is just that God is serious about love. You say, how come there's so much tragedy in the world and people do this, do that? That's why God says, you know, you got to love people. 
You know what I mean? If you love people, somebody's not going to go out there and kill somebody or do something crazy. He's serious about us loving people. We can be serious about preaching. We can be serious about seeing tricks and miracles. Do a trick. Oh, everybody come. No, oh, just touch me. I want to fall out. I want to be healed. And God's just like the healing comes from love. He is serious about love because there's a powerful, love is a powerful antidote to really change people. Love. But we're looking for all the other tricks and stuff. Man, do all that. That's good. But at the end of the day, let that be built on love. Not just a look at me. You know, I say, all eyes on me. No, all eyes on him. Amen? Number two, love is the key element for God's standard. Standard operating procedures. I think pastor preached a message one time. Standard operating procedures. So you say, well, how do we do this? We got this whole thing of life, and how, how are we going to do this? There's a certain standard for operating procedures. And using spiritual, for using spiritual gifts, and love guarantees that the nature of God's character is at the heart of all services provided. So we're talking about the nature of God. So the nature, the very essence of God, the core of who God is, God is the source of love. So when we operate in the gifts of the Spirit, we're saying, you know what, all, anybody operating in the gifts has got to be motivated and activated and led by love. And that's what keeps a standard. Because if people are cocky and they're rude and all that, and they're operating in the gifts and they don't have love, I mean, after they finish talking and doing stuff, they can't just sit down with you and eat and be cool. You know what I mean? Don't even want to sit down. No, something's wrong with that. But afterwards, you feel like they're approachable. They love, like you can talk, you know, you say Pookie and them. They can hang out with them too and be cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they say, oh, I don't, I don't hang around those people. You know, uh-uh, something's wrong. That love factor. Amen. Amen. And that's 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, talks about God is love. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to do a little illustration here. Um, I need a sister real quick. going to do a little skit. Is there a sister that can volunteer? Can you? Yes, come on up, sister. <laughs> Appreciate it. Going to be a, a little skit here real quick. Thank you. All right, so we're just just now getting to church. Hello, sister, how are you? Good morning. Good morning to yourself. Okay, all right. Whew, hallelujah. Now we're at the altar. How great is our God, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. hallelujah. sing hallelujah, with me. Jesus. How great oh God. is our God. Oh, that's that lady that was Rupert Rude. She got to pray for me. Oh, God. <laughs> How many of you guys, somebody being rude to you, now they want to come lay their hands on you and pray. You're like, let this person stop touching me. I don't want that spirit. <laughs> Give me a hand, you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, no, they being fake. Now they want to get spiritual and they act like they were listening to the message and they going to come pray for me. Nah. But if you have somebody, you come in and they're like, hi, welcome. It's so good to see you. And they come pray. You're like, oh, that nice person's praying for me. I want some of that niceness, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give her a hand. Amen. All right, now I need a brother. I'm always using you, huh? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this skit is just a skit, okay? So when they do skits, it doesn't mean it's that's who they are or anything. All right, so me and this brother, um, we're in counseling, and we're, we're just talking. We're, we're not counseling. We're just talking. And um, he's just starting to reveal some stuff to me. Man, is there anything that you just want to tell me? Like, I mean, we all, you know, the Bible talks about confess your faults one to another, pray yeah. one for another. And yeah, As man. a brother, this is between us, and we can just get it out, you know. I really ain't got nothing to confess, man. I'm doing good, you know. I mean, every now and then I beat my wife, but she needs to be put in her place, you know. And them kids, you know, I just... I just kick them around, and I come in, and they get mad at me. I just kick them in their face. My wife, she get, she don't cook. I just drop kick her. You know, I mean, you know, but you know, I love my wife. You know? Okay, okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. Um, well, you know what? I'll tell you what, man. I'm about to go. Can I pray for you? Okay, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you know somebody beating their kids, beating their wife, and they want to come at the end, and they're going to pray for you. 
How many of you guys should be like, nah, I don't know about that one, right? <laughs> Thank you, give me a hand, you guys. <laughs> and my brother is not doing that, amen. <laughs> but you would be surprised at some folks who look spiritual and they doing some crazy stuff. You'd be like, oh no. You know what I mean? Oh no, he didn't. Oh yes, he did. <laughs> and part of that, because because if you're loving people, you're loving. That's a, that's the greatest gift. You gotta is you gotta love people. Amen. Nobody wants those things. Um, it doesn't mean anything if you don't have love. Amen? Amen. Um, we will need the gifts that God has given us to help the church be healthy, powerful, fill in this powerful, and intentional in doing the work of the kingdom of God on earth. Amen? So that's our goal. We want to be healthy. Okay? We want to be powerful. We want the work of God. We want to be intentional. We're trying to do something for the kingdom. You know, we're, we're trying to do something for, for God. And we're doing that together. Amen. Um, I was thinking of when me and we were in India and uh, we were out in Goa. And um, at nighttime, I think yeah, we were ministering at night. But during the day, we went out riding the bikes, the mopeds, and it started raining. And we were like, man, we're like an hour away from where we're supposed to get and we're supposed to minister that night. And uh, me and um, Giovanna, and um, Brother DeMarie and different ones were out riding the bikes. And, oh, yeah, oh, you, you, were, you were in the um, hotel. You were like, it's raining. I'm not going out there. <laughs> she already knew. <laughs> she was like, I'm not getting on those bikes. No, this isn't going to work out good. And, you know, it's hard to drive in a developing country like that on those bikes. But anyways, we were on our way back, and it started storming. And at first, we, we stopped at a little tea place and a little shop, and we were sitting there, and the rain was going. And then we put on our little, um, our little wet jackets, and I told Giovanna, we said, for the kingdom! <laughs> We put on there, we got on that bike, and it was raining, and then Giovanna is like trying to cover my head, and we're in, just, we're getting rained on, and we can crash, I mean, it's just dropping, and we just kept saying, for the kingdom, for the kingdom, we're, we're drinking the water as it comes down, <laughs> but it feels good to do something for God, even when it's sacrifice, and you're getting rain, whatever it is, it's for the kingdom, <laughs> amen, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's what you want, you want to do something for the kingdom, amen, number two. Love reveals the very nature and truth about who God is in action. In our world as seen through the life of Jesus Christ. So when the word talks about in um, St. John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. That's meaning God's love became flesh. Amen. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, and he was known for revealing and implementing the full definition of God, of loving God and loving others. So let's look at John chapter 4. We're going to look at um, John chapter 4. We're going to focus on that as he's talking to the woman at the well who was a Samaritan. And I was just loving this when I was studying. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. It's nothing like you just look at the life of Jesus. He's God manifest in the flesh. He's got all the gifts and all the power. And how does he handle that? And how does he operate in that? Chapter 4, starting at verse 4. All right, so um, I'll start at verse 3. Talking about Jesus. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. And... He must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, um, Sy, Sy near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied, um, wearied with his journey, sat down on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman from Samaria who to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me a drink. So background story. Well, he's going to say it anyways. For, this, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith um, the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samarians, Samaritans. So anyways, they, they're having a culture thing. They're having a problem. They're having a race war. They're having an ethnic problem right now. 
the Jewish people, they don't usually talk to the Samaritans. The Samaritans are people who they worship idols and they're supposed to know the true God. So they're kind of mixed up. And they know that Jewish people think that about them and they don't really talk to each other, you know. So it's hard to really uh, minister to somebody if you know that people, they just don't talk to each other. We got some problems. Like I guess you can say racist, right, or something like that. So she's like, why is this guy talking to me? They don't usually talk to me. So let's see what's going on. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living waters. So now Jesus is getting deep. He's like, I'm God manifest in the flesh, and I'm letting you know that I I'm talking to you. Uh, the woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from where um, then has thou that living water. She's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Are thou greater than our fathers Jacob, which gave us the well to drink thereof, himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. So Jesus is getting deep with her, and he's talking to her. She's still trying to give the whole background of their history. He's like, we don't talk to each other. Don't you remember what my people did, and you think that you're better than that, and blah, blah, blah. And she's just talking. She's not trying to have that unity right now. The woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water. But he kind of got her attention. She's like, okay, well, give me that water, because I'm coming here all the time, and I'm tired. Um, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast five husbands, and he whom now has, that thou hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So this is what's going on. She's like, I perceive you're operating in a gift. I perceive you just gave me a word of knowledge. You just gave me a word of wisdom. It's getting her attention. She's getting a little faith. She's like, what's going on? But also, he's even talking to her and showing her love. Usually the prophets, and so they're not talking to them. They're the Samaritans. But she's now thinking, man, there's something going on. There's something special about this guy. Um, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiping in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So the Jews say you got to worship in Jerusalem. The Samaritans say you can worship right here. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he starts breaking down this word, and he's like, you know what? Let me tell you something. There's coming a day where it's not about whether you're a Samaritan or whether you're a Jew, but you're going to have to worship God in your spirit. God's looking for people that love him. God's not like looking for tradition or just some religious folks. He's saying that, forget about all that. Understand that God loves you, and if you want to worship him, you can do that, and you can get this living. Waters is going to be for everybody. Love takes you past all of those different boundaries that people drew so he's getting deep with her and he's telling her you know what I'm coming to let you know that I love you and salvation is going to be for you as well not just for the Jewish people now the woman saith unto him I know that the Messiah now she's like wait a minute this guy is sounding like is this the Messiah the Messiah cometh which is called the Christ the anointed one when he is come he will tell us all things Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh to thee, am he. I'm the Messiah. The Messiah is coming with love, not hate, not saying my race and nobody else. Just save us and nobody else. The Messiah is coming and crossing over those boundaries and saying, you know what? It's about love. That's what the Messiah is about. He's going to bring all people together from all nations. That's what heaven's like. So he's talking to her and showing her that love. And upon this came his disciples, and they marveled. And, and he talketh um, uh, with the woman, yet no man saith, what seekest thou? 
or why talkest thou with her? The woman then let her water pot, left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and saith unto the men, Come and see a man which told me all things that I've ever did. Is not this to Christ? Then they went out into the city and came unto him. In the, mean, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed. Okay, that's different. Okay, so we'll go down to verse number 39, where she comes back, where they come back. And they, okay. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages. Ah, da, 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 da. Verse 30, where are we at? We're going down to verse number 39, right? Of chapter 4. Uh, yet months. 39. Okay. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testifieth, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him, and he would tarry with them, and he abode there for two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of this thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Because he crossed over, and he started showing love to a Samaritan woman at a well. And all of a sudden, he started revealing who he was as God manifested a flesh. And he has a plan to forgive people. She goes out and tells other people. They come back and say, wow. And they heard him for himself. And they saw that love and experienced it. And that's what it's all about. When people hear, they, they hear from God. And you fall in love with God. You go and tell people. And they say, it's, it's better than what you told me. I'm not just believing God because of what you told me about your testimony and the stuff that you went through. Now I met him for myself. And I know that he is the savior of the world. There is no greater love. That's what it's all about. I know that was a lot of scripture reading, but that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. So regardless of her Gentile background, um, he gave her attention, he showed her love, and offered her hope of salvation despite her circumstances, that she had five husbands and the one that she was with wasn't her husband. He looked past all that, and he saw a deeper need in her soul. And that's what love does. The Bible says love beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. It doesn't give up. It doesn't fail. It sees those circumstances and it says, you know what the answer is? Love covered a multitude of sins, right? Jesus spoke a word of wisdom and knowledge to her. She received it. She went out and told others that she met a man who, who told her everything and many other Gentiles begin to believe amen and we see that throughout the scriptures as Jesus interacted and walked with people he would do the miracles the feeding of the thousands and opening up the eyes of the blind and talking to tax collectors and people but showing them love and doing the miracles even when the religious people were like on the Sabbath day there's not no work to be done they come and say you healed a man on the Sabbath day. They, they're saying he should be stoned. Jesus is like, you know what? <laughs> what's, what's wrong with loving people? What's wrong with healing people? Amen? That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. What love does for the person wanting to operate with the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Now, other fill-in was um, many people... Um, because he, um, we believe this, okay, Savior of the world. Why did they believe this? Mainly because he showed them love. It says, we believe this is the Savior of the world. Why did they believe this? Because he showed them love. Somebody's saying they're the Savior of the world and they don't love people, then something's wrong. That's not the Savior. What, lo what love does for a person wanting to operate with the gifts of the Spirit, what does love do? Love, this isn't in no, no fill-in or anything. Love will fill in the gaps for lack of faith and hope needed to activate the gifts of the Spirit. Love will keep our motives and intentions pure while we're being used in the gifts of the Spirit. Love will silence the voice of pride and fear of the enemy to allow us to move in the gifts more freely. Love will create a strong commitment after the gift of healing has taken place. Love will cause people to want to be used by God and to help others in the body instead of focusing on personal needs. Love will produce the character necessary to protect the gifts um, of the Spirit from being abused. And love will keep you saved after the miracle has taken place. So anyways, as you look throughout the Old Testament and you see all the miracles that God has done, 
Um, you look at the nation of Israel and you say, man, they were delivered from Egypt. All these great plagues and all this stuff. And eventually, you know, they, the Red Sea was split. And, you know, God, once they went through the Red Sea and, and Pharaoh's horses were, 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 were covered by the sea and, and the enemy couldn't catch them, right? It was such a testimony, such a miracle, right? You would think after something like that, you'd be like, God, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. They didn't know him as Jesus yet, right? But Jehovah, I love you, right? He opened up the Red Sea. You know, they, they're, they're, in, the, they're in, the, in the desert. They're like, I'm cold. It's like a pillar of fire. Look at God doing miracles. Look at God just doing great things. Everybody should just go rejoicing, right? All of a sudden, man, they're like, I'm hungry. They got us out here. It was better back in Egypt. They don't, man, I thought you loved God. You over here complaining again? He's like, okay. Let me bring some bread. He got manna falling from the sky. Another miracle. God is using Moses and doing all these things. People can see. They're picking up bread. They just wake up every morning. There's some new manna. Mm, it's called, what is, what is this? <laughs> I don't know, but God is doing great things. Man, they get cold. I mean, they get hot. He brings up cloud to cover the sun. They get thirsty. God will have Moses hit a rock. He's supposed to speak to it. But hit the rock and the water comes out. He kept showing them over and over how he loves them, and he's doing these miracles. And they were like, Shh, God don't love me. I want to go back to where it used to be. And how many of you guys, you start looking at life, and even though God does so many miracles and so many great things, there's something about that flesh. It, it just wants to see a trick for that moment. How many times, sometimes God does, God, if you do this for me, man, I love you forever. I serve you forever. But then some new need comes up. Some new situation comes up. And the enemy starts saying, see, I thought God loved you. I, I thought God was faithful. And he started bringing all those doubts. And the only thing that can silence the doubts of the enemy is what? Love. I don't know everything. But this one thing I do know, as Paul said, right? Talking about I press. I press towards the more. Paul was going through it. They were suffering, man. They were going through it. But I know that nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No height, no depth, no things of the past, no things of the future. Yes, God, use me to heal people. Use me to open up the eyes of the sick. But at the end of the day, I just want to be in love with you. I just want to be close to you, God. I just want to serve you all the days of my life. I'm pressing towards the mark not to do another miracle, not to get somebody to speak in tongues. And I'm just trying to do, I'm trying to get to him. The great, the pressing towards the the mark of the prize of the higher calling is how can I love more? How can I bear all things? How can I hope all things? You know how it is when you're really loving people and they're taking advantage of you and the flesh is like, stop loving them. They're hurting you. But God's like, it bears all things. I used to see it in my grandmother. You see the kids and people taking advantage, still loving them, still showing the love of God, still showing the nature of God. That's the miracle. That's the type of stuff that if God's going to use you, just like he used Moses. Moses wasn't all big hit it and saying he could have been. He could have been the most person that if somebody ever wanted to just be like, I'm all that, it should have been Moses. Right? He's like, it split the Red Sea. You know, we took down Egypt, the Pharaoh. You know what I mean? But he was so humble. When God was thinking about destroying the people because they were complaining and wasn't showing love, he was like, God, don't destroy them. Kill me. Take my life. God, I love these people. You love these people. I want this testimony for us. I want them to make it. I want them to be saved. And that's how we got to do. God wants to use us in the gifts. And the whole thing is that so somebody can see God's love. God's still working. He wants to heal your cancer. He wants to heal your sicknesses. He wants to speak that word of encouragement to you. It's because he loves us is why he's going to do it. Not because of my voice. Not because of my faithfulness. Not because of who I am, who you are. It's because he loves us. He don't want the enemy to prosper over you. He doesn't want no weapon formed against you. He wants to silence the voice of doubt and fear and all the confusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too many people... Not having a genuine love for God or people. And they want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. God wants us to be used. But we can't do it without love. If you're feeling intimidated when you see people operating in these gifts, and you say, but who am I? I don't have it like them. Well, don't feel like that. If you've got love, you've got something powerful. Amen. If you've got love, if you've got love, that's what, that's the ingredient. That's the soil that God needs to be, for, for him, for, for anybody to be used by God. Amen. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. So I press, amen, as we stand. This is the shortest one I've done. Look at this, 820, amen. As we stand. And if you're saying, God, I want to be used. Amen. I remember getting the Holy Ghost and, 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 and how it feels, you know, to, to have God's spirit just all over you. And you hear those messages and people talking about you have a destiny. And God wants to, to use you to, to bring people into the kingdom, to show people about his love. And, and you go out into your workplace and you're so excited to testify and, and, and to, to talk to people who are hurting, who are going through stuff. And you say, you know what? I found an answer. Man, it's in Jesus. I found that true love. I found that real way. The way that really works. And it's not hyped up. It's not fake. It's not false advertising. I found the real deal. I found something sturdy. I found something solid. It's not a trick. It's not inconsistent. It's stable. And you know what it was? It wasn't the goosebumps. It wasn't just the music or the preaching. It was the love of God. People showing the love of God. Us feeling the love of God. And God just speaking to you saying, you know what? It's all about my love. He said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. If you're saying, God, I want that love in everything that I do, Lord. I don't know what gifts that you've called me. Maybe you don't even know all the gifts. You don't even know how to name them or what it is. But you're saying, God, I know that that love part, I want that first. That's number one. I want you to make your way down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to be used by God. Already God can use you because you love people. And you already, we already have um, examples. You already have people in everyday life experiments, natural experiments to be able to, to, to test this love on, to test your gifts. And when you love somebody and you speak words of encouragement to them, to them, you're already being used. It's not once you walk into a church service and then you say, my gifts are now going to be activated. Those gifts are activated in your home when your kids mess up and when, when your husband or somebody makes a mistake and you start loving them and speaking encouraging words to them and you say, God, give me a word for them. Give me a word that will make my kid feel like they can go back to school and stand confident, knowing that they're a child of God. And, and yes, it's going to get better. I'm going to learn how to read better. I'm going to learn how to interact with my friends better. I'm going to learn how to talk to my teachers better. You give someone a word of knowledge, and they say, you know what? I'm going to go to my job, and I'm going to show my boss that no matter what anybody else says, I am a hard worker. I do care about who I am and what I'm doing in this place. God keeps using you right now. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the power of love. And we know, Lord God, that there's no good thing that we can do outside of your love. But we thank you. As Paul said, desire spiritual gifts and all those things. But understand that love has to be the backbone. Love is, is the deciding factor. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that for you, for loving us. This is why you told us, oh, the number one thing to make it to heaven is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And now with with all thy mind and to love people to love people and we thank you lord as the church in the last days lord god that you have commissioned us lord god oh that maturity comes through your love use us lord god let mighty things take place here lord oh a foolish and a evil generation and looking for a sign but you said there shall be no sign but jonah hallelujah oh but the sign of jonah that oh lord god hallelujah we thank you lord the greatest miracle is that god became flesh and you died on the Calvary for our sins and you rose again on the third day and that love is what keeps us our heartbeat moving our mind right Lord wanting to help people Lord God wanting people to know how can I connect to the cross how can I connect to that love how can I connect to the resurrection how can I connect to my God Oh, use us, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. I pray that each person today would feel empowered. Oh, Lord God, just because of that love that dwells inside. You said, let brotherly love continue. You said, how shall men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another? Oh, Lord God. Oh, people can say many things against the church. People can say so much stuff, but let it not be said that we didn't love. Oh, Lord God, let love, Lord God, hallelujah, oh, be our greatest message in these last days. Oh, yes, it's not 
not a new message. It's the same message. Hallelujah. Oh, the message of love. Oh, we thank you. Use us, Lord God. Use us, Lord God, for your glory and for your honor. But we thank you that we have a standard operating procedure. And everything that we do, we do it in love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Greet someone. Amen.